first get some success and then all of a sudden the ego follows and then the ego leads, right? And then the problems follow. Well, <laughs> Guys, there is nothing more attractive, and I don't mean that in like a romantic way. I mean, there is nothing more attractive than a truly humble person in this world. They are people that people want to be around. There is nothing more repulsive than an arrogant human being. Um, I sat at a, I had a business opportunity within Keller Williams um, to be involved in a market center launch. and. Uh, staying here. This was an investment opportunity. I was in Dallas, sat down for a 30 minute lunch meeting with the principals and ran away screaming. In 30 minutes, I could not believe the narcissism. <laughs> and I don't know that it was narcissistic. I, that's an extreme term. I just was, I, I, there was no way I was going anywhere near that opportunity with money to be involved with people who were very arrogant. I'm sure they're wonderful human beings, but all I heard about in 30 minutes was everything that they had done and who they were and how great they were and how amazing and I just said, gosh, thanks so much for your time and sprinted out the door. <laughs> because that arrogance just is it's repulsive. The best thing you can do is to carry that spirit of humility with you going forward and understand that you know, you're not the first one to be successful. There's two things, and Joe has listened to me say this for the last two years, there's two things I preach to my kids, and I preach it to, to you guys as well. Number one, always remember somebody's watching you. Always. Someone is always watching you. Not like in the, you know, stalker. <laughs> Someone is always watching what you do and how you behave in every phone conversation and everything you say in the hallway. Someone's eyes are on you whether you know it or not. In addition to that, don't ever believe your own press. So when you start doing really well and everybody hypes you up and tells you how great you are, that's awesome and enjoy the celebration. I'm not talking about being like a monastic in your behavior, go you know, beat yourself up and cloister yourself away. Just realize, just don't believe your own press, right? Keep your head to the ground. Yeah. Jennifer, I really don't think you're talking to me, but my wife tells me how to say it all the time. <laughs> I love you, Mike Carter. <laughs> Here's the interesting thing. The life of every man is a diary in which he means to write one story and writes another. And in his humblest hour is when he compares the volume as it is with what he hoped to make it. We all fall short. Or as John Maxwell says, we're all just one step away from stupid. It's a perspective issue, right? I've concluded, Andy Stanley says, I've concluded that while nobody, nobody plans to mess up their life, the problem is that few of us plan not to. Did you follow that? Nobody plans to mess up their life. The problem is few of us plan not to. That is, we don't put the necessary safeguards in place to ensure a happy ending. He says, remember the big picture. He talks about John F. Kennedy. He had a, a plaque in the White House with had the inscription on it. Oh God, thy sea is so great and my boat is so small. You ever seen the athlete that comes out of high school, like small little town, huge fish in the big little pond, goes out to the big bad world of like playing SEC football and all of a sudden they see the ocean? You know, man, they were the king. They were the king of the world in, you know, any town in Indiana. Tiger has a pet scan. Absolutely. And then you go get perspective. That's why we go to things like family reunion. That's why we go to things like mega camp. Because we, you know, we kind of get excited about ourselves and we look around and we go, okay. And it's not that we need to be self-deprecating. Don't beat yourself up or be, you know, value your worth. Just understand that there's always that, you know, I remember my dad told me this when I was running. He said, there's always somebody faster than you. Just, just get real clear on that. There's always going to be somebody faster than you. And that's, that's the truth. Today, there's a lot of people faster than me. <laughs> then there were fewer, but there were still people faster. Remember the big picture. Recognize that everyone has weaknesses. I'm going to say these three together, and then I'm going to talk on them for a second. Recognize that everyone has weaknesses. Be teachable. And be willing to serve others. Guys, 
we talk about servant leadership a lot, and in a leadership group that I work with, we were talking about this um, last week, servant leadership. How do you develop servant leadership? Number one, I think number one is you understand that everybody has a story. So no matter what they bring to you in that conversation where you're talking to them, or how you think they are, or what you've determined them to be, understand that you don't know where they came from. You don't know what they've lived, what they've experienced, what hurts they've had, what losses they've had, what successes they've had, and what wins they've had. You don't know what they face in their family life. Gosh, there's a lot of people that are super private. We have no idea what they struggle with every day, or what battles they're waging, maybe even righteous battles. And yet we judge people in a second. Well, I don't like that agent. They're this. Ugh, they did. Stop. Give people the benefit of the doubt. If, if everybody just gave each other, that agent on the other side of the deal that you just want to, you know, grab them by the throat and put them up against the, the wall, just give them the benefit of the doubt. Because you certainly don't know what's going on in their world, right? What would life look like if we all just gave each other an ounce of grace? Just a teeny bit. And didn't form an opinion. You realize. That was kind of my aha. Moving, I'm just going to be really vulnerable here. Moving into the team leader role, there was something really great about every single one of these agents in this building. 256 of them. There is something amazing about each one of them. And we all tend, to, if you're really judgment day honest with yourself, because I, I am preaching to myself, I can tell you I've judged a million times. It's a battle. What if we just gave each other that latitude? How would that change your world? How would it change your leadership? How would it change your business? How you interact with your clients? How would it change the nature of the deals that you're doing? Maybe you wouldn't have so many battles from contract to close. Maybe it might make your life that you gripe about and how awful that other agent is, it might make it a little bit easier. I don't know, I may be wrong. But I bet it changes your perspective on it. Be teachable. Yeah, I sat and had a conversation with somebody yesterday, the other day, and he's over and over and over, four times, said, I know, I know, I know, I know. I said, all right, well, I guess we're done talking because you clearly have it all figured out. Guys, be teachable. Understand that everybody has something you can learn from them. My, I learn from my kids, you know? There's, there's moments that you can learn something from everyone. And when you really adopt that posture of being teachable, it's amazing what you will learn from those around you. Be willing to serve others. Be grateful. You know, yesterday was tragic, wasn't it? I mean, that was like, that showstopper stuff right there. People showed up to run a race that they and you know how, do you guys understand how hard it is to qualify to get into the Boston Marathon? I mean, that's, talk about achievement. That's a huge achievement. That's, that's, in the everyday, outside of Olympic caliber athletes, in the, in, in the runner's world, that's, that's really it. You know, and a marathon or a long distance runner. You, you, you do Boston, you've hit. They have all these people that have done all this. They showed up and their families there and their friends are there. They're always cheered one. You have 23,000 runners. And something, I can't even, I can't wrap my head around it. I mean, I, I don't know how to. Did you watch the special last night? Because <clears throat> actually, even more tragic is a lot of those people were running it in honor of the Sandy Hook. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of. There's just layers and layers. I mean, it's, it's just, and as the stories unfold and come out and more and more, we start hearing the human story and, and the, the individual ones. It's incredible. Here's the small amount that I got out of it, though, from, from kind of having talk radio on all day in my car and trying to catch snippets of it. Um, what compels someone to run to a blast? To help. Mm -hmm. What com Great. What compels someone to do that? Because I'm going to tell you right it's now. Serving it. yeah. mm -hmm. it's really but it's general. years of character development. Because mm -hmm. if you don't have it, that bomb goes off. Where do you go? Mm -hmm. I don't. It's I don't know what I would do. Mm -hmm. This isn't. I'm not saying I. You know, that bomb goes off. I'm ducking and hiding, possibly. Mm -hmm. But instead, these people. And you understand that's an instinctive reaction, right? When that kind of thing happens, we don't live in that world. We don't live in Israel. 
that, that's what people live with in Israel. I'm not making a political statement, but I'm just saying that's what people live with. Every day you go to the market, you may get blown up. That's just the way it goes. We don't live in that world. We can go register for the heart run and not worry about is a bomb going to go off at Providence Hospital. Right? The Boston Marathon, are you kidding me? I mean, are you kidding? And yet people in an instant, I mean, they had a millisecond. They ran to the blast as opposed to that self-protective instinct. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you watch, there, well, I saw one video where they're across the street and you see the explosion happen and they're amongst a group sitting in some bleachers or something. And I went back and watched it several times. The blast happened, you see people going, what the hell just happened? Mm -hmm. And you see a couple of folks run towards it, mm -hmm. right? And then whatever, 12 seconds later, you see the other one. And now people go, and they scatter, and you see even more people go. Mm -hmm. it's, it was pretty unique, and I was talking with my wife about that. Like, uh, a bomb went off, why are you not running? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I don't know what that would be like if I was right there. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, and, and, you know, we, we lived through this in 9-11 where you see the photos, you know, of the first responders and the photos are of their back because where are they going into the building? And you may look at that and go, that's an extreme situation. I mean, those were terrorists that flew into a plane. That was a normal day. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was a normal day. The Boston Marathon happens every year. It was not an abnormal day. Here's my point. You have no idea when you're going to be called on, not just in your business. I mean, screw real estate. Not just in your business, in your life. When are you going to be called on to have character? <coughs> you don't know. Not one person sitting there yesterday thought, wow, there's a chance that five bombs could be planted right here. Guarantee that thought never crossed their mind. Right? Mm -hmm. And yet, person after person after person after person just stepped up. And I was reading this, and of course thinking about that, and just going, you know, all we're asking is to develop character that can lead a real estate business. We're not even asking to figure out a tourniquet made out of somebody's shirt to save somebody's leg. That's lead. I mean, it was graphic. Those are incredible, those are wartime situations. And yet it's every day. And what I know is, I want to be that person that's ready, right? I don't know what I would do. I have no way of knowing it. But I want to be that person that would instinctively lead with character. That's who I'd like to be. But it doesn't happen one day. It starts today. It starts with being teachable, with keeping big perspective, being honest. And every little thing you do, did you really get the signature on that thing? <laughs> did you really disclose everything you needed to disclose? Did you give your client all the, I mean, it starts right here. And don't we teach our kids that all the time? Did you take the cookie out of the cookie jar? No, don't lie, because if you start lying now, you'll lie later. Well, we somewhere lose that for ourselves. So my encouragement to you and is this. Your business will grow as your character grows. I would love for this brokerage to be known, not just by the numbers, because, man, we got some incredible numbers also by the caliber and the quality of human beings that run those businesses. And people say, I don't know how they do the volume they do, but have you met that guy? Man, what an incredible human being. Gracious, kind, smart, savvy, good negotiator, tough, but what a great human being. That would be a legacy that Keller Williams Alaska Group could leave that I would be proud of. I'd like to join Keller Williams. I'm just not a good enough person. Mm -hmm. After nine, I agree with everything you said. After 9 11, I called my son out. He was going up to college or someplace. And I said, Julie, are you, are you preparing yourself? He said, For what, Dad? I said, Are you preparing yourself to give your life for your country? Because you've got to be thinking about that. And that's something people have every way to do. Hey, we, we had it here in the Arctic Van. Did you guys read the story? The guy that went down somehow fashioned this repelling cord to go after the nine-year-old kid in the snow, you know, that fell in the, in the hole of the snow machine. It wasn't even the kid, it was the snow machine. And yet he still just, he said, mm -hmm. someone said, would you have gone in if you had known it was just the snow machine? He said, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That dad needed to know. Mm -hmm. I needed to go down. I couldn't get out. He was three feet from the top and still couldn't get out and had to have more people. I mean, unbelievable. That's like the Arctic man. I mean, how many people go to the Arctic man and party and have a great time? And that's a normal event, right? It's part of Alaska. 
Nine-year-olds are snow machine at all. You just don't know when you can be called on. So start today. And oh, by the way, God help you. I hope you're never called on for anything like that. I hope that never happens to any one of us. But in the meantime, we'll leave an incredible mark on this city in our real estate transactions. State. Total world domination. Okay, I let you out early. Um, thank you for being here today. And uh, really soon.